God damn it. God damn it, China. And Discord. You subscribe to Pando? That's so hot. All right, all right, all right. Uh, thanks for the sub, Joby. Much appreciated. Um, guys, a nice episode with someone special, especially because I think um, we rarely get to get an insight in the Chinese groups. 
and uh, I think Fulcrum um, is a really good um, FC to uh, talk to about that and FCing in general. So uh, I think uh, it's going to be very interesting. For those who are not aware, um, he is the main FC or one of the main FCs. I believe you're the main FC, right? Yes. Of of Army of Mango, who had an interesting or have an interesting path. Uh, obviously, they just came over to the server from the Chinese server. Um, how long ago is that? A year, maybe? Is it a year? Ten months. Ten, ten months. months. Exactly that, ten months today. That is impressive how far uh, you guys have come. And you also have a history with Rooks and Kings, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with those guys. Um, and yeah, it's hard to get Chinese players that speak uh, English very well. Um, you know, and uh, your English seems to be like better than mine. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so like, can you give us like a little bit of an of an um, an idea like when did you start Eve? how did you get into Eve? because I think living in China it's it's probably different to the to the rest of the world right because you have your own like you started on uh, Serenity first right yes I started on Serenity like 10 years ago you know, it was my first year in college so it was really boring so I, I was I was playing World of Warcraft. So one day I saw this advertisement that there is a game called Eve. I s suddenly remember like, you know, like in 2006, I have played it briefly, like for a week or so. I think they do like one week or two week free time at that time. So I say, okay, let's start to play Eve. And here we are, I stuck in it. <laughs> like a like a simple advertisement yeah you know what i think i think that was the same for me i forgot i thought uh, it's a shooter kind of thing you know i didn't know it's an mmo so you know i i think i clicked also on some random ad and thought yeah space stuff that, that's cool let's do it um so yeah but you started on the chinese server and yes, then I started on Serenity, yes. But you uh, switched server early on, not just with Mangos now, you already had Tranquility experience basically, right? Yes, exactly. So when you switched, you instantly joined Rooks and Kings, or did you knew, know the guys, or like what was going on there? So there's, there's, there's a certain way I do things. So when I start to play Eve, like in 2010, 2011, there was a group called REC, Royal Angel uh, Club, or Council, I can't really remember. They send a hack fleet every two, three days to visit where I live. So my people had no idea how to deal with it. And everyone gets, you know, ask it, they, they ask, get kicked. So what I was thinking was, okay, I should probably learn from the best. So I start to searching videos on YouTube on Chinese platforms. I find a Rooks and Kings video. So I think, okay, right? You, all you guys have, I have an idea about Rooks and Kings video, right? They are just awesome. So I think, okay, they are the best probably. I should learn from them. So I registered a, a character on Chancoli server and contact contacted uh, Rooks and Kings members directly and asked them for help. I said, okay, my ass is getting getting kicked. So I'm playing on Sonority and we have no conflict in interest. Would you like to help me? So in the end they find, okay, that's an interesting idea. So they taught me how to use their Pantheon fleet, how to use their church doctrines, how to use tax free fleet and all the doctrines. They help, they help me to understand and practice. Then I bring them back to Senarity and, uh, you know, to conquer people. That's, that's quite funny, right? You, you went out, you uh, got the info and you came back with the knowledge and then 
and it all worked, right? I mean, you guys dominated the Serenity server, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, later. we dominate. We control like 80% of the known sack, and uh, no one could have a keep star without, without our permission on Serenity. Which is crazy. I mean, so I don't, I don't know how to do it, but how to ask it correctly. But do you see parallels? Like, are we moving in the same direction as, um, as Serenity on Tranquility? Now, for those who are wondering, by the way, guys, yeah, LV two two three is actually his his mind. He's actively playing right now, uh, and also like Tranquility being the server for everyone else. And Serenity is the Chinese server, just in case anyone here doesn't know the terms, right? So do you see some parallels going, uh, going in that direction right now? Do the, we have to be worried? The power... No, not, not actually that I'm aware of. It, the map looks similar because I think that's, that's how you know, power block grows. Uh, the goons basically uh, on scenarity like uh, five years ago the pibc was exactly like the imperium right now we controlled phantom uh curious delve and the pure and uh, whatever below i can't remember the english name Perfect. so and uh, and the other there we have uh, another power block called fdk basically they call them fate deckling that's the Fade and Deckling Alliance, okay? And the, bro and, uh, the John Land has their overlords for sure. And the, the Lexi, you know, is a power block too on Senority. And one day they decide all to, you know, attack us in Delve. And that's where the 49-U6U happened, that, that battle, that mm -hmm. super battle, yeah. like a BTEC R on Tranquility. And we won that. So in the end, they lose their face to fight against us. So on Tranquility, I don't see that. I don't see people lose their face to fight against goons. They they think okay, goons is really powerful, but they won't. They, they are not thinking in a way that goons are not are undefeatable. I think mm. that's the difference. But so you could argue though that the power blocks are growing like big groups are growing and let's just say i'm not like nobody uh go to reddit with what i'm about to say <laughs> i don't know if that's what's happening but it looks like ranger regiment and some other groups are getting pushed out of the conflict that's happening right now into um into the imperium which then would you could argue okay they didn't conquer this space, but they grow in numbers because, um, you know, it's just the, what happens. And then if that development co goes on and on and on and on, it might not be this year or next year, but maybe in five years we have the same situation. But you you would think it's a... Um, so you're hopeful that it's, that's not what's going to happen, yeah? Yes, hopefully that's what's not going on now. All right. I mean, you know what? I tend to agree. I do not think, I do not think um, that's going to ultimately happen here. I, I don't think, um, I, you know what? Does that maybe have to do also with uh, the time zone aspect of things? Because you guys on the Serenity server, it's all the same time zone, basically. Or not that same, you know, it's a massive country. But like, in a certain area so everyone could kill each other at all times and you can't like there's no barrier a time zone barrier you have to break and stuff you know i mean we see it right now with the with the best time zone tanker the world has ever seen <laughs> um, actually it no. can be a, a barrier then sorry actually no uh, the time zone tanking on senority is still a thing so yes, we're all Chinese, and Chinese are using one single time zone called the Beijing time. The problem is if you have the disadvantage, for example, the Ranger Regiment against uh, Panvan, right? The, the Ranger, the GOTG obviously has a disadvantage. They will set set their timer clock three a.m. in the morning, and Nobody that makes people yeah that that makes no one wants to hit it. 
and that's yeah. the tactic goes and it happens a lot but at the same time if someone decides to you can attack it with way less numbers then you know like it, yeah it's shit but, for both sides so are you really time zone tanking or is it you know but the, the problem is uh, we have lots of space for example when we are attacking the rac the royal angel console mm. um, we were in astoria it's a big region right and we took half of it without any anything any aggression it was all in the middle of the night, like three o'clock to six o'clock in the morning. So when we attacked VYJ, it's a choke point, probably the last constellation. The REC secretly built up a hundred men jazz. So we were, you know, tired. So I was, I wasn't there. He's a, he was a, you know, rookie FC, leading twenty carriers to bashing the IHUB. That's the, that's the, that's the story. And you know, he got dropped with a. I think 150 or even 200 jazz, and we lost like 20, 23 super carriers in that one battle, and that stopped us, you know, to you know take more space in Astoria. All right, so they switched the entire region, like they switched everything in the time zone, and it's just a fucking massive grind because of it, and because you you have less players on the server. I mean, what's this? Uh, what? How many players did you guys have online on on the, at the same time usually? Do you know? Normally, like, oh, in our prime time, it has like twelve thousand. So even oh, right now, the server is is on a test test version. That means everything happened in the test test phase. It will be deleted. Even now, it has like two thousand players still playing it. I have no idea why, but they're still. Oh, well, I mean. You can make the argument of you know people in high sec and so on. Like, do they really care all that much? They probably just log in and and you know do their thing. They don't have any interaction with other people. Maybe I don't know. Two thousand seems a lot for the like test server. Yeah. Yeah, and then so um, a lot of people. So you already were on Tranquility and you already knew your way around and all that stuff. And then suddenly a lot of Chinese players come over. Like, what was your reaction? Like, were you happy about that development? Just saying, fuck yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's invade Tranquility. No, actually, that's, um, there, there were two waves of uh, Chinese people migration. So it's a kind of migration, immigration, immigration. So the first wave is fraternity. They are mostly ex DJ member. They were the Galaxy Alliance, uh, and uh, mostly RAC. They were, you know, defeated by us. And there's basically just no way to to win the, in that situation. To be honest, if I'm on their side, I I would just simply quit because when they're hiding hiding NPC space and they believe that's safe. We just we just anchor and keep start right outside of that uh, the, 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 their station system and bubble it. So it was a it was it was a desperate situation. So they decided to move to Tranquility. But we were really happy, you know. They move out. That means we don't have to grind stuff in the middle of the night. We don't have people cloaking campus, and we we will be winning, right? But things start to change when when Synergy goes down. He went down like a year ago. I think it's 2000, 2018, the last day of September. The server was closed. And the problem is he has been in test mode for, for a year now, I think, more than a year now. And there's no sign yet it would, it would be reopened. So the only way to preserve our allies is to move to tranquility so we moved here with our allies uh many allies actually uh the win winnie winnie Vici is our ally and the msn alliance wisdom is our ally and the moon and stars allies they were with winter coalition they were our ally on serenity too and uh yeah that that's about it oh so like you also took that relationship with with you over to Tranquility, so um, 
Ranger, not Ranger Regiment, Veni Vidovici and MSN. So you still consider them your allies right now? So if there's a war, like you guys support each other? Because there were some yes. confusing things going on. Uh, I have to say, like, you know, your legacy, not in legacy, but affiliated. So, you know, those are kind of your allies. Then you have, um, you know, legacy or test doing stuff up north but then people would help out suddenly and i'm i'm like what what is even going on i don't even understand right and that's like this whole history of of chinese alliances killing each other on the other uh, server and then obviously also helping each other so um but you took those relationships um over and you keep them huh yes uh, let me let me make it make this more clear, make it a more clear picture for you. So, Winnie Winnie Vici was the I could call a Chinese version of Penfam on Senority, and the, the PIBC Mangoes were the Imperium. So we are the best allies on Senority. So you can imagine how powerful would that be, right? Yeah. So after eight years to be allied, I think it's eight years, allied with each other. We have personal bondings. So let's let's not talking about friendship. Let's just talk, talk about interest. So Winnie Winnie Vici, they are leaders are the people we can trust because we have, have been trusting each other for almost a decade, right? And so they trust us. But not not anyone else. On on center, on tranquility, everything is new. If you ask me to trust you, Pando, I would have my doubts, reasonable doubts, right? You can understand. I'm <laughs> sure you can understand. Super trustworthy. Right? <laughs> but uh, we we trust each other. So, uh, and the Mango is not part of the legacy or the Fire Coalition. We are independent, and uh, uh, we have a pack. We have a mutual defense pack, I think that is, with Lexi and Fire. So that means if we are under attack, they would help us. If they are under attack, I will help them. The Soviet attack, of course. But they will not force us to, to join any any war against our our willings. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's why that you means... stayed out of the, the last war. A yeah, lot, that right? means that means that means if if Lexi is having a war with Penfan, we can choose not to shoot each other unless it's necessary. For example, if you know if we have conflicts, which is likely, but uh, we'll see when it happens. We will negotiate, of course. But for now, we are friends. We're friends with Red Regiment. Uh, the Mangoes are friends with Red Regiment, the Windy Windy Witch MSN, and the POA in Guns. So basically. Uh, the army of mango is friendly to everyone but winter coalition every chinese but winter coalition uh on chan quality at the moment yeah and then someone asked why test though you want to explain like why did you join the legacy why did you join legacy um and not uh okay the decision was be was was already being made before we come to Chang Quality that we are going to join Winter Coalition. That's the decision. It was a done deal, right uh, before we contacted the test. So and and Norris, uh, the 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 offer is is totally different. So we contacted almost every every group t contacted us, but it's not so polite to reveal their offer, right? So in the end, it was only test and the collision that we can choose from the test offer us you know mutual defense pack and many things i mean i mean the whole region of omist and uh, other stuffs i don't want to reveal that but many many isk and uh, you know good support and uh, on the other hand norris offers no not even one isk not even one space that we can live in. He asked us to rent in his mother. I think skill you was still alive. <laughs> and you took that as a time. you took that as a uh, as an insult, huh? Yes, we took that as humiliation. So of course we don't have a deal. So basically test was our only choice after we met Norris. Yeah. Well so and you also 
I'm not sure if that's... You also um, thought about joining the Imperium, but the Imperium um, didn't want to have people join that they don't know. But because you guys came over, you uh, like nobody knew you, and uh, nobody can join the Imperium without them having like a relationship already, right? So that wasn't an option. Yeah, that wasn't just, an option yeah. for the Imperium. Yes. Yeah. Um. But so it's ten months. That's not a long time in Eve terms. But we fought your supers and Munin fleets and stuff. So uh, you've got uh, you guys come a long way. And it's a unique kind of thing that you, you know, you start a new game with experienced, like you start Eve new with new characters, but the players have experience, right? So when you guys came over here, you basically laid out a skill plan for everyone and then just said, all right, everyone just skill into Munins. That's the way to go right now. And then for care bearing, do this and this and then that. And then you just like everyone just followed the plan and injected as much as they could and stuff and that's usually that that's probably what like the legacy isk went into i guess like cheaper um injectors or what did you invest in the most then like what was the uh, biggest what was the biggest hurdle for you guys to get settled actually basically uh there are only two groups constantly hunting us that make most of trouble if that's what you're asking Oh, uh, that's not what I was asking. But yeah. no, what I was asking was um, to migrate over to this server. Like, what was the hardest part about it? So was it the skill points, the missing skill points? It's obviously a big problem. And then making ISK and stuff like this. Oh, like, is there no. maybe another hurdle that, you know? And then also, you, I'm sure not 100% of your guys went over. Right? So if you have like 10,000 players in your alliance, I don't know how big it was, um, I would guess maybe 7,000 moved over with you. Or did, like, what were the numbers like? Was that maybe another hurdle that you had to take? Yes, the problem is in this kind of situation, uh, you know who is your real friend and who is not. Uh, on April, uh, April 4, 2019, uh, PIBC itself formed 700 Titans and Titans only, and with many other subs. And probably, uh, I would say, uh, probably a thousand and two hundred people we formed up and fight April's full fight. And only 400 people landed on Tranquility with us, and only half of them survived. Uh, that's the problem is we have to figure out how to pay for the for the tranquility because Chinese the, the method the way Chinese used to pay doesn't really work for example Alipay and uh, how to go across the language barrier we have to use a patch note uh, or a patch that is not verified by CCP CCP knows that but he won't be CCP is not going to ban those use those uh, patch patch Chinese patch and we have connecting issues. We have to use a VPN to play, not e VPN exactly, but we have to use the booster. So with all these problematic things, many people just choose to stay on scenarios instead of come with us. But uh, as Asher told me, this is probably my you know most enjoyed time on in Eve in my whole life because I know who is my friends. I know who is not really. I I I know who who I can rely on and I get fights almost every day in Omist, you know, on the first days I come. Uh, when we settle in Omist, there are only two groups of people uh, that constantly hunting us. One group is uh hard knocks. Okay? Uh, the other one is you. I think the IIT. Hey, 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 we weren't yes. constantly hunting you. We were constantly hunting everyone. Like uh, we yeah. still do. Okay. <laughs> Fair point. But we are scared. Okay, so I, I inject uh, the spies in IIT. So every time you form, I ask my boys, okay, Rocco's down. Uh, IIT is formed. Let, let's wait <laughs> out the storm. That's the, I hate spies. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the, that was the deal. Sorry. But uh, yeah, that's well, that's like that. I don't know. Yeah, but... Uh, 
Yeah, the, the it was a it was a really fun time. I, we lost, so there was one rookie FC, a new FC, not a rookie one, but a new FC. So that night I was not around. So Harnock just bomb our local fleet. So we formed up the Munichs. So you can imagine how how three months old Munichs could fight, right? But they, they're in Munichs. It's too scary the Munichs. Yeah. Yeah, but they're only three months old, so they have many skills, the lack of many Cap skills. issues. Many skills, yeah. And we lost 64 Munichs to 20 Slipniers that night, I think. I have no idea how he lost it, but we lost it. And we lost the Rocco. And the fight well, Hart looks like good pilots. Right? What? I said, like, Hart knocks are good pilots, right? So they, yeah. they know they, their shit, usually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so that was like it was a struggle, huh? Yeah, it was a struggle, but it was really fun because um, because you have fight almost every day. Uh, back on scenarity, back back to the uh, you know the last days of scenarity, I have to get my titans from catch to cloud ring to kill a dread bomb. You know that that's how how hard it is. It is on scenarity on that day, so uh, it's a, it's like a heaven here because when we on scenarity, <laughs> as, as I told you, I, I I would like to learn from the best, so I could be one of the best, hopefully. So I watch IIT's video, I watch Hard Knocks video, and all those you can imagine, mostly wormholers. Okay. So when we landed here, they're like dream come true. You know, like you, we are actually fighting against these people. The hard knocks. They are the, you know, they are the most elite PVPers on this server. I think so. Okay, back back on Senority time. I think so. I still think so too. And the Pandemic Legion and the Northern Coalition. They are all hunting us in almost and it was just awesome time. And the most awesome one is the Elo Knight. I think Elo Knight is one of the best FC on Chun quality. Right, I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, the best. Right, okay. When it comes That's to me, I think fun. whenever we talk about like the best FC, I always think about doctrines too. At the moment, Munins are still very strong, and he's the best Munin FC, which makes him one of the best FCs on the server for sure. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you talk and about he... Titans, for example, I don't think he's the best FC there. Right. But yeah. yeah. And he's on the other side of the wall. So my ass often get kicked by him. And I enjoyed it, actually. I like to fight with him and lose the fight. Because, you know, he is the one. You know, like, you get a chance to play a basketball with... To, to play basketball with Michael Jordan, right? You would mind you lose it. You would still enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's a, that's a healthy mindset. That's a healthy mindset. And you know what? I The first time you comboed me, I forgot when it was exactly, as a while ago, but we were in your space and hunting your stuff, and I don't know if we got a good fight or not. I think we fought some Munins and probably tried to bomb you to shit with Stukas, but uh, you guys adapted fairly fairly well too, in uh, in terms of, like I think we caught you once, and that was it. After that, you adapted right away and you um, spread out and, you know, the counter to Stuka, really. It's not that hard. Um, but you adapted instantly and then we, uh, we you come with me saying something like, good fight and, um, you know, just, you know, no drama, no, no hurt feelings, just, you know, good fight and let's do it again. And uh, I could tell right away, all right, these, it's a healthy mindset uh, you've got for that you know and i remember no... that fight i remember that fight you caught you caught a hell and a rocco in the sim system so we lost the hell and you killed it instantly because he doesn't have yeah. capacity and you killed it then you walk to the rocco i said okay then i'm gonna save the rocco so we walk to the rocco i think okay it's a stuka and it's bomber fleet so i ask everyone to orbit me at 30. so you know most people can land a perfect shot on your the bombers and that's I think that that was the fight, and you try to push me out and ask a heavy dictator to, you know, just uh, put a, uh, just to scramble me and to be safe. And you yeah. killed him, and 
then try to jump him out. But I have a MJD in the middle slot of my monitor, which most people tell, told me that's a cover play, but he saved my fleet that day. Right? <laughs> yeah, I remember, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the special part about you guys. Every time, like every time I talk about Stukas, if we are fighting, for example, Munins, I would always say, if it's the first time you face Stukas, you face us in Stukas at least, you know? It's not easy to catch Munins, but we, we kind of got the hang of it. The first time they fight us, we always catch them. It's the question, are they going to adapt the second time? But in your case, I think I never caught you guys clean and you adapted before I even had the chance. And I wondered why, and I don't know. It's probably because you had a lot of fights in that area, right? Test was uh, running Goku's, which is pretty similar. Um, so you probably got the experience from the outside already, and you already knew what to do from other people's experience, which is rare. Usually you have to learn it yourself. But yeah, I remember, yeah. I was impressed that you guys didn't get caught. Usually, if it's the first time I see like a certain taker on grid, they usually get caught because <laughs> they don't. They just anchor up and hope for the best, and then you know it's the lazy approach. It's just a matter of time. We might not catch them right away. We might you know take five tries or so, but at some point, I and I, I, chance. I lost the. I lost like a hundred uh, tax trees in the similar situation that I ask everyone to anchor on me. There was a really good group called Avengers, Infinity Avengers. Do you remember them? I think they disbanded or... I know, I'm, I see, I've seen that name, yeah. Called Scarlet Cat. He is the Chinese version Elo Knight, I would say. He is the best on Senority. And, uh, you know, when mm. I lost to anyone else on Senority, I would be unhappy. But when I lose to him, okay, so be it. Uh, I can't beat him probably in my whole life. So I lost a hundred tax trees back to the, you know, glorious tax three fleet time. So he used um, three battleships, probably Nesto. I think one Nesto, one Bargron, and one Nightmare with with heavy web and scramble in the mid slot, with have a smart bomb on the high slot, and with ECM burst in the mid slot. That means when he tackled my anchor, which is me, and my whole fleet go into a chaos phase or situation. So everyone broadcast for rap. Everyone is delocked constantly. And it was a disaster. So I learned from there. <laughs> That's a, you know, but like what, like how did you lose like T3s though? Like nobody took range because the smart bombs, they only have limited range. You can just orbit at 20 and you're fine. Yeah. But, but you didn't know at the time. time. So it was the first time. They have a zealot <laughs> fleet, a proper zealot fleet, almost the same number. So they were cutting me through. Before I, after, you know, before I know, um, I lose my half of my fleet, and they have like three or four heavy dictators, and then we can't All break right. them. So I lose my almost so what, my whole fleet. Uh, so what actually happened? So first of uh, first, I thought like three battleships alone killed that fleet, which is you know that would be ridiculous. But what actually happened was like, so they pinned you down and then because they were smart bombing, all your guys were like broadcasting for no reason. I mean, for a reason, but the wrong reason. Um, and then you had so many broadcasts that your logics couldn't keep up. And then there was a zealot fleet killing you from range. And uh, yeah, you couldn't do anything about it because you got delocked all the time. So you couldn't trade with them. Yeah. Yeah. We did similar things actually. There, like if you if you would look at my kill board, there's like one month uh, or two where we had a war against the Russians down in Esoteria catch stain area, and we were doing um, firewalls a lot because the Russians at the time were flying um, uh, heavy missile tangus, and we would just firewall them with like two or three. Um, and drakes. Drakes were still a thing too, yeah. That's where we started with the firewall. I think um, the firewall approach changed uh, against the tangos though. Um, so instead of everyone having a smart bomb, we just had like three or four specialized people with smart bombs. And then I would end up on all these friendly kill mails. That's why I say like you can see it on the killboard when it was. <laughs> um, 
and we actually also tried to uh, increase that because I was thinking like we might as well just get on zero pin the anchor and then you know try the same thing like slowly kill them but yeah with smart bombs there's always that issue of tie-dye generation right you start smart bombing tie-dye breaks let you don't know what's happening and uh, yeah but it never worked out all that well with the with a damage approach with the you know get on zero but the firewall always worked well which was great it swept to vindies did we use vindies at the in the end by the way honey monster that's dark shines who i okay. think you fought just yesterday and he like he was impressed with your like so usually when we hunt with like kikis supers and so on like smaller groups of supers we're not too worried about it but uh like he said you did a great job with um a fighter bombers and the bomb runs which is rare usually it's not a big deal but there was a lot of bomb runs coming in or something um i i wasn't there so maybe like you want to say like what happened there yesterday i think you caught them in the end and it was a really good fight well he, he caught my ass <laughs> in the middle of the fight so we saw many spy uh, many sabers coming out he was in its sabers I, I instantly understand okay here we go we're gonna you know do something about it so i asked one of my nicks to gate to, to gate to your scouts and of course he get caught and we dropped supers on them but things suddenly turn, turned south because one of my hell pilot jumped in and he's a shield hell uh, and i was terrified so what I was doing was I asked all my uh, fight, uh, all my uh, supers, just launch the bomb and uh, recall the jo uh, we recall the fighters, then launch the fighters, then launch launch another wave of bomb, because you all in a frigate hole. No matter how tanky you are, you are not likely to tank like three to four bomber run. And uh, like two months ago, or even one month ago, Winter Coalition tried that. They format, I think it was a 200 man bomber fleet. It was after burner bomber. They call it Stuka, but they never understand how to use uh, the uh, command destroyer. So I just say bomber fleet, okay? So they he tried that's to Goku, kill one of my. Yeah, that's just Goku. Yeah, he tried to kill. They, they tried to kill one of my Nicks. So I dropped in like 12. Nexus, I don't know. I don't know the. I'm not sure the about the number, but they keep fighting. So we asked everyone to just bomb it, and we killed the whole fleet. I think. I think that's that's how I you know understand that bombers could kill that fleet. So you you and, just tried it, and then you're like, oh, that kind of worked better than expected. <laughs> yes, because I was bombed once. Uh, I was in a bomber, and someone accidentally bombed. Me. I say, okay, that's a good damage, especially when you all anchored up. That's a that's a problem. And the last night, I think I was, I, I was, uh, I know that you know after my failed bait, you guys are gonna retreat. So I ask my Sino to get ready, right outside of a drift wormhole. So for my credit, we don't have it on Scenarity, so I have no idea how it works. So I was about to Sino in Smart Bomber Supers, on the beacon. But uh, obviously they can't turn up the Sino, but then I warped my Mooning fleet like 30, 40 men to the beacon and I think I lost most of it. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Usually what happens, right? Dark yeah. Shines and I, no, like, like what I was about to say, like Dark Shines and I, we usually like I take out a fleet or he takes out a fleet and then at the end of the day we play a round of whatever. At the moment we're playing PUBG, which is like whatever. <laughs> just like chill and then we tell these stories like <laughs> he tells me what happened and stuff or i tell him what happened so we can learn from it and he just warned me of those fighter bombers uh, but yeah he's <laughs> he said like hmm, he was surprised those mutants were, were warping in like that and then you know he uh he just brawled you guys and yeah and i think that's the time when you convo me thinking i was the fc you come with me yes. saying, oh shit, I didn't know I can't light the sign over here. <laughs> and I was like, what? What is he talking about? And then I realized, oh yeah, Shines is out with a fleet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so kind of funny. And he was waiting on the gate and the bubble up, waiting for my mooning fleet to warp in. And the oh, you've seen I, that trick I before. Huh? Yeah, I've seen that trick before. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, caught one of your FCs once, but 
not clean enough. Like we brawled him and stuff, but he did a good job getting his his ass out of there. Yes, yeah. I, I I remember there was a fight in Omist. You killed a uh, you killed a mining Rocco without panic, right? And I was trying to save him, but by the time I woke in, it was too late, and we were having a fight. You remember? And yeah. uh, the fight you were at that time, you still have a Stuka, right? And the problem the problem is, I took like ten Commander Destroyer too, and I asked all my boys to do, to load the chamber. So when you jump to me, when I see your dis commander destroyer uh, bush then you i ask too. mine to bush and i will keep your distance at 100 so i can always shoot you but you can never shoot back you remember that fight yeah an easy yeah, counter I to stuka right it wasn't that hard isn't it yeah it was easy but uh but stuka has a lower stake right if you lose your fleet i think you won't be more than two two billion that right? is true if i lose mine that will be you know i don't know 15 yeah, so you know what though no, I had that before that people did that. But you know what the common mistake is there? They want to counter our Stuka fleet with like which has like fifteen, maybe twenty command destroyers, so we don't run out of command destroyers, and they just bring five. And if I see that, in your case you had enough. So you, you had enough for me to say I can't just keep MJDing after these guys. But we've seen it with um who were, I think it was GOTG at the time, they brought like Corms and tried it. And they said, oh, we just MJD away, but we just keep hunting you. You're going to run out of MJDs, right? And then we catch them at the end. That's quite, quite nice too. But uh, yeah, you had enough MJDs there. And it's a pretty yeah. simple approach. It's not that hard. You have to just know what you're doing. So I would call it skill, right? Um... And then you can for, outplay. It would, ha it would be hard for most most uh, alliances because my people actually knows know know what they are doing, right? They are experienced player. They played Eve, most of them. Okay, many of them played even longer than me. They play Eve like for fourteen years now, so they have every idea what's going on and what they need to do. They just old. Uh, I, I quote really, really, really said Mango are just. Uh, old generals with young body, so it's <laughs> that's not true, right? They have they have all the ideas how to fight, right? So, commander destroyer is a big investment of skills, right? You have to you, you cannot use that, oh, right? And you can true, only yeah. use that for sorry, you can only use that for combat combat purpose. It was because I designed that. I asked my core fleet or uh, core members to churn it because we the coalition was using egos at that time they they could form like 500 men ego fleet two ego fleets all afterburner so i think okay if i can bring 50 commander destroyer that would be the end of that ego fleet right yeah and uh, finally e elon i turned up and screwed up my plan and everyone is in mwd munings and <laughs> well i mean bush eagles they would have worked against Munins, I would argue. If you go for full, full range eagles, right? push the range to like almost 200, 170, 180. Outrange uh, Munins, I think um, that would have, would have worked well still. I mean, some people try it. You know, the problem also is with bush fleets, um, uh, bush eagles not so much. Because their AB speed and stuff, it's not that easy to like warp chemo Lokis in, for example, and you know, chemo them all and then get rid of the command destroyers, which is, um, you know, one of the counters. Um, but you're always bunched up in that one group. And then Eagles, they're more expensive than Stukas, for example. If you're bunched up like that, there's so much room to completely lose your entire fleet, too. Right? So there's an increased risk there. I mean, it goes one side or the other. Like, if you lose that fight, you're probably going to lose a chunk of that fleet. Because, uh, you know. But yeah, I yeah. think, I th I still think it's an interesting aspect, but, you know, I don't, I'm not bitter about it anymore. I'm like, I'm over it. <laughs> it is what it is. I've got my kickies now. They're fun too. <laughs> yeah.
I, I could I could I could feel your feelings when CCP fucked up the Sino range. You know that. Uh, like a month ago, I tried to pipe bomb uh, Norris fleet, and it was a success mission. But we landed 15 kilometers away from the Sino, and Norris got away. Ah, I was so angry that CCP fucked up the pipe bomb. But okay, in the end, they turned. They they say it's a bug, and they fixed it. Wait, what? What did they fuck up with the? I don't, I don't know if I'm. So when you light a sign, you bridge, you bridge battleship through, right? Normally, you land it uh, two thousand five hundred meters yeah. away from the sign, right? But a month ago, it was like fifteen kilometers away. It was totally out of smart smart bomb range, I think. Oh, did they change that? No, it's not anymore though, right? They fix it again. Yeah, they changed the back. Yes, they changed the back. I think they had the idea of like, and I. I kind of like it, not necessarily for the um, thingy though, not for the um, for the pipe bombs, but um, I like it in general, the idea of the more mass you have, the further away from the sign you're going to appear. I kind of like it, but it, it would be logical, but I'm not sure if it's for gameplay, if that's needed or good or bad or anything, but, you know, just the, the idea of it, you know, it's, it's an idea worth entertaining. That's maybe what I'm okay. trying to say. But uh, yeah, for pipe bombs, it's obviously not so good. Yeah, not good. You will just kill pipe bomb once for all. So I think CSP think that's a bad idea. So they yeah. just it back. And then Ron says, anything is better than bouncing. You know, you know how much content was generated by people getting bumped and shit? I'm a fan of content. Like, that's what we... That's what... CCP should always have the main focus on is like give everyone the ability to create content. And you know, if you jump like a shit ton of titans, like a hundred titans on the same sign, oh, yeah, there should be a disadvantage to that. And I think bumping, it's a natural disadvantage then, or not a, not a disadvantage, but a natural kind of, you know, it opens up some things. If it's only one titan, you're obviously not going to bounce. So, um, um, Maybe it's a it's a it's a natural thing that you know should stay like it is. You know, it Even, makes accidents, which exactly. creates content. It, it, that's exactly what I'm uh, saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so your FC style. What do you think? Like, so when I think about like an FC, I always think like so. If you have a a, a pie chart kind of thing. Like how much of it is theory crafting? How much of it is um, like actually FCing, and how much of it is actually leadership stuff? Let's say you like you're leading an alliance to a degree, you know. Um. So like, how much do you think percentage wise would it, would that be like theory crafting, FCing, or leading? Um. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I think it would be half and half, but I have to give my credit give the credit to my crew so there is a uh, people you know a uh, judging all the fc on sanity so i am in his mind i am definitely not one of the best fc i am not even tier one fc i'm probably tier two fc uh in and who's sanity so uh in uh, i respect uh, you don't know him but i respect his idea uh he thinks my i am not good at all but my crew is one of the best, probably the best on Sanerity. So I have a group of people that they are all doing their own job. Uh, my FC abilities are not coming from myself. I, it's coming from them. They will give me the right, right suggestion during the fight. So basically, if you're having a fight, they will say, okay, Frokon, I suggest you to do this, and I suggest you to do that. There's a whole crew of people just constantly correct you know, correcting me during the fight, so I will know what to do. For example, theme cra theory crafting. I am not the one to do the theory craft. I am the one to pop up the idea. So I will say, okay, how about Ishtar fleet? Is that any good? Then I throw it to the crew. The crew would brainstorming it, and there is one guy who acts act like a uh, called REF. I have to give him a credit. Called REF. I have to. Uh, he thinks like a machine, and he will always give me the best solution, and I trust him. 
it will give him the best solution and tell me if it's viable. And that's how it works. So basically, if you ask me, okay, how much do you think you are FCE or leadership? Uh, most of the leadership I rely on Mento, who is our CEO, and the most most FC thing and theory craft thing I rely on my crew. So probably I am the one that's just I'm the front man. Okay, I stand in the front. I have a whole crew of people that stand behind me to help me. So if you ask how much how, how many credit I will take, I will take ten percent of it to to my to to everything I achieved. Yeah. So. Uh, I totally agree, and I think that's the best way to do things anyway. And like, I think it's the same for me. Like, I don't even consider myself too much of a good FC, <laughs> but uh, I like the theory craft though. So if I would have to do it for myself, say like how much percentage am I a theory crafter? It's probably like, you know, it's probably pretty even thirty thirty. Uh, maybe, maybe more of a theory crafter than an FC actually. You know, maybe. 40% theory crafting, um, and then, I don't know, 25%, um, maybe like leadership stuff, and then the rest, uh, like his FC ability. So, but yeah, I 100% agree. Like, um, if you want to get stuff done, you, you're not going to do it on your own. You don't solo stuff. You always have like, um, like a right hand, a man or woman. Um, helping you out with stuff or an entire team you know if you have like a group of people theory crafting I think in our case it's similar um, but like I th like to theory craft my own shit but then I kind of like to throw stuff at the other guys too and see maybe they have a better idea and we are very open to suggestions too so if someone says like hey this fit kind of uh, you know could be improved here or you know Stuff like this, obviously, would be would be dumb to not use the resources you have in other people, right? Yeah, yeah. I, my my best wingman called General Romoto. He was uh, a long time ago. He was playing on Chen Collective Two. He was in the verge of, of collapse. If you remember those guys, yeah, I do. And uh, and he reestablished the uh, and Wormhole Alliance on Senority under the same exactly same name and uh, uh he was one of the best wormhole you know pvp alliance on scenario ever and uh, the other one the other one is star chasers i have to they're also one of the best too i think these two are the best there's no one else could compete with them and uh, normally i rely on him to you know we generate idea me and him then we throw it to the crew to really Siri crafted out and nowadays i think i enjoy to talk to asher called asher elias right yeah i talked and to him just yesterday a... <laughs> okay <laughs> he's also he's... a theory crafter yeah he has many brilliant idea that we can adopt to you know to put in our doctrines yes so for example we are really thinking about the the amar hack i can't remember the scurly whatever Sacrilege? i can't remember the yeah, sacrilege. Yes. Yeah, he we tested them. Serious thinking it. Yes. Yeah, he he fought just yes, uh, two two days ago, maybe three. He fought mutants with sacrileges, and uh, completely obliterated them. Right? Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, the approach so, is simple. Right? The DPS is high. The application is easy peasy because it's missiles. The damage is delayed, which is a disadvantage, but Anyone who's at range from you is getting tracking disrupted anyway. So um, they kind of have to be close if they want to apply their DPS. Otherwise, you always win the trade at range. Because at range, Munins, for example, have way less DPS and then tracking disrupted on top of it. It's a struggle. I would say so. Um, there is probably a little bit of a sweet spot where Munins at range can still be effective against them with certain numbers. But yeah, we talked about exactly that just a day or two ago. Like that's usually what happens. I forgot what I wanted from him. I think there was like some not drama, but some name. Like I wanted something for him from him. And then we always end up like theory crafting about shit and you know talking Kikis versus Munins and sacrilegious versus Munins and all that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a he's a good dude to talk about uh, that kind of stuff. I'm surprised. Yeah. Like, and so you guys are talking a lot, which is surprising to me because um, you're not. I learned uh, from the, I, I learned from the best. I, for, uh, as you can see, I don't have any any hatred against almost almost anyone on chain quality, right? So anyone come to almost and fight against us. I would just say, okay, let's fight. After the fight, I would let them go. For example, if you remember, I let you yeah. go once. Remember, I said, okay, you stop hunting us tonight. I let you go in peace, right? So that that offer is open to everyone that come to Omist. You come for a fight. If you lose the fight, we won't camp you. You just we just talk and we make a friend and we let you go, and that's it. That's how we do things in Omist. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I think there's no. No need for hatred. Sometimes I hate people because, for example, the Winter Coalition people, for example, Norris, I hate him personally because he doxing me and revealed my real life identity in game and probably elsewhere. I can't prove it's him, but uh, yeah, it's, it's no. Winter Coalition members. So it becomes a bit personal. Except that I, I don't have any ill feelings, you know, to lose any fight, to, you know, to get ass kicked by anyone that that's it's just a pixel game right yeah actually so loros i talked to him and he as far as i can he's a he's a nice guy actually so maybe you guys just take that history to another level you guys have <laughs> i don't know i uh, think not, i think Noros is not, a good dude he's a good guy for his alliance for his own people uh he treat his own people nice but outsider not really I, I st let, let me emphasize this for example when we talked to norris uh 18th 18th april 2019 in the afternoon we talked to him about we mango joining winter coalition and the next day it was the 19th april he talked to his right hand and the chat lock was leaked he talked to his right hand about how to uh, after Mango joined Winter Coalition, how to use goons and tests to destroy Mango, and then he lost my trust, and that's that's it. I still have the chat log. Deep <laughs> <Your> politics, <laughs> some serious yes. business. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know about all that, but uh, it seems like you guys share some interesting history. <laughs> and maybe there's some more history to come hmm? yes Norris is a good good opponent to fight to be honest he's he's really good at his alliance and uh, stuff I have to give him credit even he's my enemy alright so you pushed all your guys into Munins now like they can fly Munins fairly well like after 10 months I think probably not all five but you know solid mutants um but is there like a doctrine that you guys were using it on serenity that you would love to like bring back or are you guys already scaling into sacrilegious because you were talking to asher a lot get out of my mind please <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm i'm not i'm not asking my people trying uh chaining it but i'm about to i think 90 percent about i'm still you know, thinking about Ishtar or Skullage. I don't know. I'm so, still thinking. Yeah. I did try Ishtars recently. There's just not the fights for it. I mean, we couldn't use them all that much. We used them like maybe twice and it was like, or oh, three times. Um, and it was like, we didn't have any fight where we could actually measure them. You know what I mean? One of the fights were against Domis and Ishtas are um, Ewa based, so uh, it's pretty useless. We just engaged for the good fight. Then there was a fight we were super outnumbered. We took, um, and you know, if you win or lose, like if you win, obviously that, there's a measurement right there, but we lost that fight. But you can't really, like any doctor would have lost that fight, uh, I feel like. So uh, we couldn't actually um, yeah, figure it out yet, but I can say. Ishtas are way harder to fly than Munin, uh, than Sacrilegious, I would say, just because of the drone aspect of things. You know, you have to drop drones. Drones can be countered with smart bombs and bombs and all that stuff. And uh, you have to position those drones if it's sentries. 
um, heavies are going to be too slow, the kill speed is too low, uh, even if they reach the target, but if the target is moving a little bit faster, which is at the moment the matter with munins and eagles and all that stuff, targets are going to move a little bit faster. So, um, I would say sacrileges are probably the stronger, um, the stronger all around doctrine for like a for an alliance, like as a strategic tool. I would go with sacrilegious. Yeah, sacrilegious has one problem that you, you ask me what doctrine I want to bring back. Um, Fire which one. is Zelo fleet. Is the Zelo fleet? Yes, we probably. So uh, if you remember how we, uh, I just told you that uh, how I lost my hundred taxeries. I I'm trying to bring that back. So I gonna bring three probably three nestos with me, with. A spot bomb and whatever is in burst. If I use Scarlet, uh, it will be a you know firewall. So I I could probably make a chaos, but it will be hard for me to kill anything. So I'm thinking to use Zealot. Uh, but there's uh too many Zeracraft to go on to 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 be down here, right? Yeah, for Zealot. Example, okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. For no, example, on your screen, there's someone just called almost my real name on your chat. Remember that? You see that? Uh, that the number guy? Yeah, see that? I, yeah. The 161? That's almost my real life name. And Winter Coll many Winter Coalition members just call me my real life name in game. So someone asked, is that oh. you call me a politic talk? Yeah, that you see that. It's coming for me. It's not, I find, find them. Yeah, no, we don't need that kind of shit. Yeah, I think so. As soon as it goes into real life, there's a barrier getting crossed, right? I mean, best example is GigX and stuff. Um, you know, people never like did a real life threat to me or anything. Um, but some people cross that line, you know. And uh, I think that's an absolute in any game. It's an absolute uh, no go, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> why would you even like? I mean, I don't, I don't think uh, anyone would have to be worried all that much if your real life name is out there, like you know, tough shit. Um, but it's just not necessary, you know. It's just not like why would you do this? Um, it's a little, um, a weak character move, you know. But yeah. Um. Yeah, I think Fake T is taking care of that stuff. Yeah, we've got some mods on it. And that's basic, that's by the way what we talked about before on stream. It's kind of like leading a fleet to a degree, right? I've got a hundred people in fleets, and then I've got my my team behind me. <laughs> it's like uh, Fobber or Fake T and Veer and you know who are like probing wormholes, or they um, you know for example. Uh, uh, fake T, he did the 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 overlay of the the, the whole thing and stuff, and um, and stuff. So they helped me with like stream stuff and so on. So it's always a team effort, which is quite nice. Yeah, you you have a you have to have a team to survive in. If many people have also already complained that okay, I have to do all the stuff. I don't wanna you know do that, and I go AFK. That's most FC's destiny. I think they just don't know that there are too many people who want to, you know, share your your work, but you just don't let them. So that that I think I think that's their own fault to you know burn them out, burn themselves yeah. out. Is that maybe the most underrated um, quality of an FC to be able to form a team around them? You can be the the best, most brilliant FC, but if you're not able to build a team around you, you will always fall behind in it. In, in certain scenarios, you'll always have that disadvantage because you like you have to do it all on your own. That might be the best ability you can have, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would I would think so at least. Um, you you can you can make up for a lot of um, stuff if you have like a good team around you. Um, yes, I probably have uh, one of the best team on tranquility too. Yeah, I really enjoy to fight with them. The best FCs I ever flew uh, under always had a good team. Yep. 
I think that's a that's a common thing. Like the, the best FCs, they usually have a good team. But like you talked about Elo being the best immune in FC uh, on the server. Like I know he had a good team, right? Is that called Doom Bunny, right? A uh, Doom Bunny, Tiana, right? Tiana is now in 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 it because the uh, um, Elo like is you know yeah or quit Eve temporarily at least. I think he so, returned today. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think he Elo Knighty returned today. Uh, at least Norris announced it. Oh really? Yes. Oh, I had no idea. Might have to talk to him. Maybe he's the guest for next week. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah. Um team play number one, right? Yes. So but uh, was there like was there a doctrine? that you were um, using on Serenity that you would love to fly on Tranquility or that you enjoyed so much um, back then that just not wor- that just doesn't work here? Uh, I, ha- I don't have any fleet that just don't work here. So if you ask me oh, if I can bring only one fleet here, probably I would say return one fleet here it will be the, the rock, of, rock fleet, sorry. The rock fleet, the pipe bomb fleet, of course. That would be the best. And still, we are still running pipe bomb campaigns from time to time. But uh, before I come to Tranquility, I have never successfully run a single MWD fleet. So the Muni fleet was a bit challenging for me. And I get bombed, you know, from time to time. And uh, uh, I ask all my pilots to chain into the Hack 5. So basically, I think 80% Mango has, has, you know, level 5 hack after 10 months of training. And uh, that would that would help to, you know, that would help a Zelot fleet. So if you ask me, probably I will bring Zelot fleet. If in under small scale, probably the Legion fleets with, with smart bombing battleships. So basically, Nestos. Well, Legions are kind of coming back, right? When they pushed uh, beam lasers a little bit. Um, Volta um, and uh, the rest of the Terra Boys, they took out Legions with a little bit of E-War. I kind of like that setup. It's just right for their size of an alliance, I think. Right? It's effective at the numbers they're using. It's perfect, yes. Perfect yeah. for their numbers and their way, their, their style to hunt, yes. Yeah. Munin fleets will struggle against those. And I mean, any turret. Doctrine will struggle against those because there's very few people that can can just quick form like 200 people, and that's what you need to to beat those uh, legions, I believe. Um, because you know you're not gonna have the perfect setup if you're quick forming. You know that's that's why you know what I always say is like you know you don't quick form against these guys, and then you can you can't have a one v one with them. You know what I mean? And it's not because of the skill of each pilot or whatever, but you're quick forming and you have to get the right setup. They formed proper and they have just enough of everything they need and have the right perfect setup. Then they move out, then they tackle stuff and you have five minutes. You have five minutes. That's the rocket panic. And then you have to be ready to fight them. So you have to outnumber them. It's just natural. Right? It's like there's no way around that. You're not going to engage them 100 versus 100 with other subcaps unless you have like a uh, like the perfect counter ready to go, which most people don't because these legions are very versatile. And uh, yes. yeah, so you have to bring 150 almost. But I think though their their numbers are like 75 maybe. They can reach that. That's a solid fleet for them. Uh, I, th- I would say on average it's probably like around the 50 mark. And they're really effective in that range. So if you bring 100 dudes against their 50 legions, 75 legions, that's going to be a good fight. You're going to struggle. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, and our, our ally uh, gave me an interesting idea, which is Dominix. I think battleships are out of sight for most of the people. They're not thinking about Dominix when they're fighting, right? So if you have 100 Dominics, that would be a totally different story. Yes, you probably will not be able to break the Legion, but you you definitely break the Guardians. And the Legions cannot approach yeah. you anywhere near 40 kilometers, I think. Right? 
Yeah, so we fought the, the VVV dummies a few times. Once with the Ishtars, which was not that great for us. We actually lost the entire Ishtar fleet. It wasn't a huge one anyway, but yeah, we lost them. Um, but wasn't the main reason why they're flying those domies um, that they um, they skilled all their alts and stuff into domies anyway for care bearing, so they make isk with them, so they had the skills ready to go, and that's the main reason why they actually said, okay, let's just you know make a PvP setup for it, and they're very insurable. Uh, but like Norman said, they might just get very expensive soon because of the the moon mineral stuff. So um, I'm not sure if that's something uh, you need to consider too, right? Yeah. Uh, well, basically, no one can mine right now, but you can still mine Sanctuary. You can call Sanctuary. That they're not uh, normally in Nosec. You can read. Oh, Sanctums. Sanctum, sorry. The Sanctums, yes. They have big orbs in it. Like, uh, I don't know, 150. K, some, yeah, I saw uh, that thing. So <laughs> you can mine it, actually. You can mine it and get quite a good, you know, profit. Yeah, I saw that. I'm not sure if it was you. One of you guys sent an Alliance mail out or so. Um, obviously, spy work goes both ways, dude. <laughs> um, that you can do that. I wonder, though. I mean, I don't know. If that's, is that going to be the way to go, really, you think? Or is going to be... I mean, CCP is going to be on that, too. They might just change that, too. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what CCP thinks, right? The red dot. Oh, my God. It's killing my eyes. Oh, the red dot. You want to talk about that? I've, I've, so far, I've not made any... Like, I didn't do much with the red dot. I didn't buy anything and stuff, so... So far, it doesn't bother me all that much. Um, yeah, is the red dot gonna? It's gonna get removed, probably. Right? Yeah. Come on, they can't. They can't deny the kind of misstep there, and that's fine. Nobody's mad at anyone if they make a move, and then they're like, "Yeah, maybe it wasn't the greatest move," and then they they fix it. Yeah, it's fine, but please don't don't get your ego hurt and then say like, "No, no, no, we're gonna keep this." You know, oh, that's bad. Yeah. Um, another thing on the Serenity server that like that's a difference that I'm not sure about if it's a rumor or if it was actually true. There's one difference with Titan lances. So people kept asking me like, "Hey, why don't we do like land squads?" Because you guys on the Serenity server did use that like uh, a good few times. Um, I believe right that was a common thing, wasn't it? Like land squads. It's, it was only me and my commanders could, could run run a lancer squad, yes, but uh, no one else could. Yeah, there, there, there's a trade secret in it. Yeah, so the secret, so let's, so people keep asking me, like, why don't we do land squads? Because they see videos from you guys uh, who did it on Serenity. Isn't that, isn't it true, or am I wrong here, that the lances on Serenity did not cap each other out? Is uh, that... you're wrong. Yeah, we I'm... still we have that. We have that. You 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 nude each other. Yes. Oh, so that was so because I always wondered like why can't these guys do it like all the time, and someone said like oh yeah they don't cap each other out. I'm like oh what wow, that's interesting. Yeah, there is a way to dodge it, dodge it in nude, but uh, I'm afraid I can't I can't really tell you nowadays. When Senority come back online, Mango go back to Senority, I will tell you in private, all right, how to do that. But, uh, you, <laughs> you, you can, yeah, there is a way to dodge the newt, but uh, it's in a very uh, specific situation, in a specific location and way to dodge it. And it's 100% legal. It's not, a, it's not a bug. So, yeah, it, it happens to every everyone, but you just notice, you just don't know it. Uh, my my wingman called the Romoto, the General Romoto, found found it, and the other uh, super capital FC called Kaujas chained all my all my uh, Titan pilots. So uh, you was wondering why my pilots could land a perfect bomber bomb round with their supers, right? So 
in PIBC or in Mango, in Army of Mango, in both servers, I handpick every single one of my super pilots to join my group. I think in Imperium, if you have the skills, you have the right ship, you have the right fitting, you can join, right? But on in my alliance, I handpicked them, handpicked mm. every single one of them, and I trained every single one of them how to shoot lancers, how to land bombs, how to use bosoms, how to you know how to deal with all kind of situations. So that's 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 the that's the way why we can do it, but no one else could. I think you probably could do it too, you know, like train all your pilots, you know, one by one. Then they would make, make you know, practice makes perfect, right? Yeah. That's the right thing. So. I, sorry. I, I give my, all my Titan pilots, I give them a million, uh, how do you say that? Oh, uh, how do you say Good that? Uh, isotope. Isotopes. Isotope. I give them, each of them, a million to ask them to shoot the answer. Before they down, they get they don't talk to me, and then I give them two million and so on. So I give them five million in total, and ask them to shoot them all before they talk to me again. So that makes them why they could you know land a lancer. So where's that training ground where you shoot those lances for training purposes? Uh, we do it on scenario on oh, here. God damn it! Outside of uh, outside of the keep. Stuff. I th I thought you would do it on the on tranquility, and I might just keep an eye on that system. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's an interesting approach, right? Like the details, the devil hiding hiding the details. If you look those videos really close, you will notice how those lancers are, are landed. That's all I'm gonna reveal here. If you well, how they're really close, getting I'm... how they're getting landed is not my question. My question was like, if you have five lances, they should be capping each other out, and then. Sorry. And we had and that I... before. Like that happened actually to Panfam with bosons. Uh, in X forty seven, they wanted to boson like a group of carriers. They jumped three titans and to wipe out all the carriers, but two of the titans kept out the third one. So only two bosons went off, which wasn't enough, and then you know. The yeah, just, be just just because they don't know how to do that. If you look, uh, as I said, if you look those videos really close, no, I'm curious. Okay, if you yeah. find it, that's that that's your thing. If you look those video really close, you will know how to not cap each other out. I mean, really close. We find we found that in accident, of course. But yeah, that that's all I gonna say. Of course, when I leave, I will let you know. Okay. I I'll find it out. <laughs> I'll have my best man and women work on it <laughs> okay all right um so we are close to one and a half hours usually we go for two hours but uh there's an op coming up so i have to uh, like bail in like 10 15 minutes um okay. so just so people are aware because like people are pretty um uh pretty aware it's always two hours usually uh just wanted you guys uh to, uh, to for you guys to know um so you had some learning experiences and you got, got quite far and stuff so what's the what do you think is the worst uh fleet you've ever done or the best fleet you've ever done like is there like one that sticks out you mean the worst i, I don't want worst or the best the worst of the best or what what does that you don't understand what, what I mean with that? Like, what's yeah. like, so if you take out a fleet, for example, my worst fleet in recent memory, like not even the Iskwise, like Iskwise, I've lost like 500 bill before. <laughs> but um, my worst fleet was probably like taking out the shit ton of Nagas, and then we couldn't bridge where we wanted to bridge. Then we turn around and we get bombed, and I lost like 50 Nagas on the way, and like we're stranded in a place super far away, and we have to travel home and all that stuff, you know? Like an op that really falls apart. Did you ever have one of those, or maybe like the best op you ever had? Maybe you you know someone pokes you and says like, "Hey, can you help me?" And five minutes later, you're already formed. You have the numbers. Everything works out. You show up and you kill everyone. And you know, fifteen minutes later, you're home with like a a, a trill of uh, worth of kills. You know, like do you have like one of those fleets, or do you think like you always have like a solid foundation so it doesn't go to the extreme really? Well, 
probably one of my worst fleet uh, was uh, was last night. Actually, last night, my uh, pen was down. You know, like when I was lying on couch, and people telling me, "Okay, here's the IIT come coming, almost come on." It's okay, wait for me. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, as you as dark shines know, we warp to the wormhole and waiting for the signal, and the signal never came up, and that's, <laughs> that, that was the, that's that. that a disaster. That's probably one of my worst fleet. Okay. You know and, what? Let's make a deal. After yeah. afterwards, you tell me the land secret, and I'll tell you all the secrets about the drifter wormholes because there's more to those than uh, than what you see. Right? I know. I know how that works. I, I, uh, I know you. Works. No, you don't know. You don't know everything. I'm sure. But probably. Probably no, because Lexi has a guy called Hamfish. He's an awesome one. Uh, he told me mostly. Uh, I I think I think all the secret that you can ever imagine about the drifter holes about the, oh, really? the code name thing. The, yeah, the the name the whole how to say that the ancient code thing, right? No, uh, probably, well, there's of that. you know there's more useful secrets. Like there's a secret, or there's a there's a certain mechanic about them that we just found out the other day actually, and we have been using them a lot. Okay, I'll make a deal. <laughs> All right, let's do it then. But like, I have to do the fleet first. So let's talk. Let's talk later and exchange some some knowledge. I'll go first, and you can you can still decide if that was worth it, and you can still decide if the the land <laughs> secret is on the same level. Okay. Uh, what's a land squad? Oh well. So for those who are not aware, what a land squad actually is. So. I'm sure most people are aware that Titans have Doomsdays, right? A targeted Doomsday is like the simple old school Doomsday you, you would have. Like you can target on a, on a Dread or like any cap um, that deals a certain amount of damage. Then you have a Boson, which is like this cone that people would be reading with and trying to catch uh, subcaps with. And then there's the Lance. The Lance, it, it spools up a way longer. So fairly fast Doctrines, they're not going to get caught by that. For example, Kiki's a bit too fast for us. Like, you're not going to hit us with a lance. Unless you have, like, a grid of lances going on and we can't dodge them all, right? Um, but, so, the idea is that one lance is not that powerful. You would need several lances uh, to deal a lot of damage. And, obviously, it's an AoE doomsday um, with a lot of damage. Which has, which always has great potential. The problem is, if you activate your lands, you have a radius around you where you cap out other people, and um, including your friendly titans. So if you light one sign or jump all the sign, titans on this one sign and then lands, they cap each other out, which is a problem. A problem. Falcrum and his boys seem to have figured out to a degree. In certain scenarios, he says. So um, that's what we are talking about here, right? Yeah, I, I, sh I, I sent you a link to a video. Probably you could, you could send on the, on the. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna watch that's the video. Sense. So if I look closely in that video, you say I can figure it out. Yes, technically. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna. That's that's a challenge. I'm gonna figure it out myself. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you a secret about the the drifter warmers later, though. And yeah, bushing was powerful for that too, yeah. Because we could dodge lances, bosons and stuff fairly easily. Now bosons, luckily, are not that big of a problem for subcaps. You know, I think certain subcap fleets will still suffer. Like if you have two bosons, which is not too rare, if you have two bosons on grid and you hit certain subcap, uh, subcap fleets with it, they're in trouble. But like smaller doctrines like we fly to hunt, they can take a boson or two, that's not a problem. Luckily, imagine bosons were still as strong as they were. Nobody would be hunting anything, really. So yeah, I'm glad they fixed that. Bosons were a little bit too strong. They did create content at times. We killed Gigas Titan once because <laughs> they tried to boson our subcap fleet. So um, yeah. Um, so one thing um, I was uh, wondering about, and maybe that's that's our last question we can do actually. Um, do you think the Chinese culture in general has like an advantage, um, especially for you guys 
coming over, building up and stuff. Do you think like this Chinese culture like, it served you in a in a way, or maybe is there like a disadvantage um, that we don't even know? Um, you know, the Chinese culture has an Eve. What do you think? So Chinese culture are basically five things. We we use that to to you know we have a code name for all our titans. We handpick it, so we give code name to every single one of it. Also, another thing, we have never lost a single supers uh, in, in my fleet, of course. Uh, there's five five principles for Chinese to do things called uh, benevolence, uh, justice, politeness, intelligence, and trust. That's the five words that Chinese do things. For example, if you if you break the trust, if you backstep someone or seniority, that's yes, you can gain something, but in the end, your alliance will be not trusted by anyone on seniority, and you're gonna you're gonna have a really hard time. You're gonna get killed, right? And uh, and and the other things too. For example, the the uh, politeness or justice. So basically, to be an alliance leader in on seniority, you have to have those qualities, or at least you have to try your best to maintain five of five of this. Okay. And uh, I would say the same can say though. We yeah. might not have them written down, but I feel like yeah, it's a good foundation over here too. But 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 on chunk quality, it's a different story. I have witnessed and. I, someone complained about the politic talks, so I won't go into the, the, the details. Okay, there was a one alliance backstepped another coalition, and he's still trusted by someone. That's a something we cannot understand. Why was someone still trusting him? Right? There's another. Oh, we had a similar situation with Snuff. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Snuff kind of backstepped uh, Shadow Cartel once, and they kind of, you know. Yeah. There was you some know, fishy stuff happening. I, I don't know the details, but uh, I, I know the story. I, I think I know the idea. But if that's on Chunko uh, scenario, that will be the end of your, how to say that, political situation of your alliance will be going to, you know, really tough. Okay. For example, uh, Chinese ask you to be polite, right? And they, I have witnessed some alliance leader calling their mem line members orphans. I mean, okay, like constantly, not in a joke. You guys without me are orphans. Uh, I mean, that's that's just not polite. But their allies are running fine, running perfectly good, and probably one of the best on tranquility right now. So, if you ask me, would Chinese culture be an advantage or be disadvantage? I can't ans really answer that question because I think uh, because I think you have to be a good man. To play, or you don't have to be a good man to play a game. But in a game, why don't you be a good guy? I mean, I I don't want to be a bad guy to let people think, okay, you're bad or whatever. You, you know what I mean? And but people think things differently. They many of them would like to play villains here, and and it, it has been a success. I have to say that their their allies are strong and one of the biggest. So. I don't know how to answer that question, but what I can do is I maintain the way that Bengal are going with that find of five five qualities, and we'll see how far Mango could go if Mango get destroyed. I will call it a disadvantage. Chinese that kind of Chinese culture is a disadvantage. If uh, Mango keeps go on and grown up, I will say that's an advantage, right? Oh, so, yeah, interesting. So we will see. That's what you're saying. We will see. So uh, to answer a question people asked, uh, are we going back to seniority when it reopens and will I stay on tranquility? Uh, I personally have some unfinished business on tranquility. When it's done, I probably probably will just uh, you know wing Eve. Uh, going back to seniority, if we have problems, of course, I have to save my crew my people those who trust me but myself or most of the mangoes will probably not go back to seniority we will maintain our you know power block or our number one position 
own sanity for sure, but it is unlikely for Mango to leave Chen Quality and go back to sanity again because because of two things. First, sanity is a good place, but we have won it. Uh, make an example. Two days, no, not two days ago, five days ago, someone daring to challenge me on sanity said, "Okay, now we can try to kill Mango on test server." So I say okay, let's 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 see how how much how many titans he got on a test server. So I give my boys two hours notice. I sum up like over two hundred titans, and annihilated his keep star and his titan fleet. If that situation ever happens on Sanity, I I will definitely go out and teach them a lesson. Who is the who who is the boss, right? But otherwise, <sighs> I probably would just stay on Tranquility because it is fun here. I have. All the people I want to know here, uh, and you can get five. You can get a fight really easily. For example, I form up on chain quality. Uh, eight out of ten, I can good get a fight, probably a good fight. And I form up ten. One out of ten on sanity that I could get a fight. So you can imagine, and when you are getting really strong. That makes a problem that people don't scare to fight fight against you. Yeah. Right. For example, uh, if someone uh, there was there was a wormhole group, alliance called uh, Siawana's Wing Runner. They live in Vinel, the own tranquility now. Back on Sanity time, they they just toasted J five A in Fountain, and there that's the that's the place that um, our CEO to. Uh, you know, done his business there. His his office are there. Okay, he's just leaving that system. He never left. So they toast that system in front of him. And then uh, it is not a big deal. So for example, if I go and toast J five A to get a good fight, I don't think Panda would invade Mango, right? I don't think that that's a that's a bad. Maybe a, I would. Well, you could, but I don't <laughs> think that's a too too bad too big a deal. But we took it to we took a big deal. We Evicted his wormhole, killed his his keep star, and you know kicked them out of sanity. That's why he they come to tranquility. It's a little harsh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but that because because it's lack of content on sanity. That's the problem. <clears throat> If you find a, an excuse that you can kick someone with you know good reason, you do it, and that's the problem. Well, I, uh, so it's not so nice to play on sanity. Not. Not anymore. Yes, it sounds like I killed all the contents. Yes, probably not. Not all on me, but as a PIBC and Vinny Vinny Witchy on Sanity. Yes, I think we probably killed all, most of the content. It's our bad. Yes. Well, yeah, he's not trying to blame you all for it. Obviously, you know, I always say like, don't hate the player, hate the game. You know, so, but at the same time. I also say like I like to talk about like issues I think the game has at the moment, like, be it supers and titans, be it uh, citadels. Number one issue, really. Right? But um, if we had way more players, I wouldn't even have time to talk about all that. <laughs> I would be busy shooting people right now. So yeah, having more players in the game, actively undocked, doing stuff. It's just it just makes for a better game, you know. That's just how it is. And I think um, for those who think it's hard to get fights at the moment on tranquility, which is, in my opinion, compared to the past, that's a correct statement. It's hard to get fights, really. Um, but you kind of brought the perspective here, I think, because it could be worse. It could be. Yeah. It could be it way could worse. Be a lot worse. Yeah, it could be a lo lot worse. For example, last night I was fighting Dark Shrine, and he, we, uh, put the wormhole to verge of collapse, and he was, uh, well, he was trying to leave almost. So we camp. We use jump bridge to camp him in uh, in front. So most of the FC, if if this ever happened on Sanity, no one would fight. They just turn around and go away, and I would probably not chase them because you can't chase a. Kiki fleet with munings, right? You can camp them, but you won't be camping them wrong, so it will be a waste of efforts. But Dark Shrine choose to fight, 
and we get a good brawl out of it. I think it was it was a 50-50 fight, right? And yeah. I, I would call it a good fight. I, I formed uh, like twice in this week. I get two fights. So every every uh, form I, I, I I get I get a fight. Of course, there will be some boring shooting structure forming, of course. But uh, compared to scenario, this is heaven here. I I will tell you, this is definitely heaven for us here. Yeah. All right. Let's end it on a good note because I actually have to go. And uh, yeah. uh, let yeah. me let me make the last uh, last thing okay yeah uh, someone asked someone asked me about uh, scenario or if it's gonna be reopened a uh, scenario will probably back online in the next six months or so uh it was scheduled in march but uh, there's an outbreak in china now so it was delayed to july but we will see but scenario will definitely go out go, go back online now okay as far as i know and so the outbreak stuff the coronavirus stuff like so you're in a town close by to that uh city where it actually originally broke out like so just like how bad is it you know <laughs> how bad is that because we have no idea over here i mean uh okay let me tell you uh, not not even related but hey yeah a government almost forced all of us to stay at home to quarantine ourselves now i think it has been almost three weeks so on the street there barely anyone and some village just just destroy their highways so no outcomers so people are terrifying by the disease how easy it will you know spread out so we have never uh, for, i have never written something like this in my whole life okay i'm living in a you know, I can't tell you, but I'm leaving a safe place. But still, in this place, you are not allowed to get out of your home. You are not allowed to get out. Oof, that's without crazy. Without reason. Of course, some place you can get a card. They give you a card. Uh, so for your whole family, one people can come out once in two days to buy, you know, uh, essential uh, stuff. Okay, that's it. And most of the factory and unnecessary play, uh, unnecessary public place are all shutting down right now here. How I get food? Uh, I have I have people deliver food to my doorstep, then I can take them in. But other people have to go out to to buy things. I'm leaving a pretty special place, not special like it's a special situation. So normally I don't get it. I have to buy it myself. But in this situation, people just uh, you know, uh, just in case it was spread out. Okay, so they, they deliver to, to doorstep. And there are many places like where I live in, just, uh, it's not a uh, military delivery, but uh, the officer in your, the, the, in the Zoom you live in, they would uh, give you the food. Of course, not for free. All right, that sounds crazy. I hope that situation gets resolved soon, so you guys can go back to normal over there. Yeah, I um, hope so. No, sounds... Sounds a little terrifying, I have to say. Um, all right, like, like I said, hope you guys, uh, um, like your family and 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 everyone is safe. Um, and then also, thanks for uh, coming on here, talking about all kinds of stuff, even about this kind of stuff. Uh, it's not even related, but I felt like, you know. Um, yeah, thanks for I didn't. Me. I hope it wasn't no, rude no. to ask, you know. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. All right, and I think uh, very interesting to get your point of view. And I'm kind of sad that this is actually the first time I have to cut a chop because of an op. Um, but I got to run. Um, we uh, we should do that again at some point, I would say. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks I, for inviting. I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, no, no problem. All right. And then for the guys on stream, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for the subs, bits, whatever. Um, I hope you understand the event sounds. I always mute them for FC chat because they would get in the way and the podcast is just, just not as good then um, to listen to. So um, I hope you understand that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'm going to have a look who we can host 
All right. See you guys around. Bye.